So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Mohammed Negm. Uh, today we are discussing the case of uh, yesterday, the same case that had ERCP done, the case that presented with abdominal pain and uh, jaundice over the past few months. And as I said, over the ERCP, it looked suspicious with a mid and actually um, the lower half of the CBD was narrowed. It showed a stricture. So we were suspecting malignancy. So I referred this case to my colleague, Dr. Yunan. Good morning, Dr. Yunan. Good morning, Dr. Yunan. Uh, so this case, as I said, it was referred for ERCP for obstructive jaundice. We saw the papilla, it was suspicious, it was bulky, and the lower CBD was totally uh, occluded. So we're suspecting malignancy maybe. Yeah. So we're referring it to you for ERCP. So let's take a look. So right now, Dr. Yunan, where are we? I think we are, it, in we the, are about uh, 30 centimeters 30 centimeters. from the incisor. Yes. We start in the mediastinum. Okay. Here I wanted to illustrate. Here is the heart. Yeah, I can see it beating. Yeah, so the uh, atrium and the ventricle. Left atrium and left ventricle. A slight withdrawal we found here. The aorta and aortic valve. For one minute, I will make it smaller. Yes. Yes, here, yeah. Left atrium and left ventricle, aortic valve, aorta, pulmonary artery, and the very interesting finding here is the mediastinal lymph nodes in subcarina. Subcarina lymph nodes here. Yes. We, we, nodes. Can we point at it now? Yeah. Yes. This is the one that we can see a little bit hyperechoic yeah. at the top of our Not screen. Not one, let's say three or four. Yes. Uh, some of them here, very interesting, have a calcifications inside. Yes. Just below the Can we though? move a little bit slower, the, Dr. Yunan, so we can yeah. demonstrate the calcifications, please? Yes. Yeah, sure. The calcifications are the white dots that you can see inside the node. Inside the node, the sign exactly. Of chronicity. Yes. Usually find in some in TB patients, tuberculosis, and or chronic lymphadenitis. So the most common cause is usually TB. Uh, and this this nice guy has a very long history of chest problems. Maybe yes. he's related, maybe not. But we have mentioned now his vision has subcranial lymph nodes. Uh, really, they don't, uh, not uh, this node rounded, quite hypoechoic, but the nodes above is triangular with calcifications inside. Yes, so this is a sign of chronicity, a yes. long standing disease, as yeah. Dr. Yunan has mentioned. Yes. So now, now we're moving further the, inside. Okay, station. So this is the endoscopic view. Remember that EUS. Just like ERCP, it is a side view scope. So you torque a little bit down so that you can see your way just a little bit as not to cause any injury because the tip of the US is quite large. So it might cause injury. So you have to be very careful at the introduction of the scope when you're moving from one station to the other. And then you have to examine every station carefully. Where are we now, Dr. Yunan? We are in the cardia, or 40 centimeters from the incisors. We found now the left lobe. If we found the aorta, no problem. We have to take only one of them and start the examination. Now yes. we are in the this left lobe. This is the left lobe. Yes, yes exactly. the borta hepat, there is borta hepat lymph nodes inside. Yes. Triangular the, nodes. Yes, the, the nodes that Dr. Yunan are referring to are now at the center of yes. the screen. Yeah. They are more or less triangular, yes. oval, maybe. So another, another sign of inflammation. Yes. Uh, they don't have any criteria of malignancy yeah. up till now. Up till now, yes. So we're making sure that... Now we will make uh, quite clockwise, clockwise, then we found the aorta. Yep. We found the aorta, we will push a little bit. We will find now the origin of the celiac. Trunk now, right now, the celiac artery, mm -hmm. and can we take a little bit yes, more yes, time yes. in this part? See, please. Yeah, celiac artery and severe enteric artery below. We'll push a little bit now. We found the body of the pancreas. Yes, yeah, this is a center, very good image. Yeah, so in the center of the screen, the body of the pancreas usually bounded by the splenic artery and splenic vein. Mm -hmm. The splenic artery above and the splenic vein below. In the center of the body, we found the pancreatic duct. Yes, so in here. You can see a structure that they describe it as salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay. So it is dotted. Now, with, hyper yes. We said a hyper cristae without shadowing. Yes. So we have at the periphery of yeah. the pancreas yeah. in here, hyper lesions. Okay. Or hyper echoic to we, be more precise. 
the structure at the middle of the pancreas, the pancreatic, this is the pancreatic duct. And here, finding it's a hyperechoic wall right now. We we'll yes. find it now, hyperechoic wall of the duct. Mm -hmm. And here in the periphery, usually hyper, like not 100% uh, lobulation, or like, well, it's not an irregular contour or not irregular outline. Mm -hmm. Now, from, from the body, we have to go to the body, neck, body tail junction. We go uh, clockwise. Clockwise, yes. we we'll find the left kidney, yeah? The left kidney is below us. Once we, re we reach the left kidney with the body tail junction and we will rotate more and more till the spleen. Yeah, when you find the spleen and splenic artery and splenic vein, we find, yeah, sure, we exceed the, the tail, but you have to go back, yeah, a little back bit. again, mm -hmm. back again here. Yes, so this is the tail that we can see at the center of the image. Yeah. Again, we can see the hyperechoic foci. Yes, no, Dr. Muhammad, not in here, this left the kidney, maybe no, no. atrophy of the tail, which is another, mm -hmm. it's a criteria of chronicity because he, here's the left kidney, yes. and here's the pancreatic tissue. Yes. We we'll go more and more to the spleen, no pancreas, yes. no pancreas here. Mm -hmm. We can say now atrophic tail. Yes. We will we'll go back so again. So this, that was the rest of the body of the pancreas. Yes, the rest yes. of the body of the pancreas. Yes. So we give the, the image now, here. We found now, Hyper echoic, a lot of hyper echoic foci, and in the in the boundaries of the region, a lot of uh, hyper echoic without shadowing, or we can say now lobulation. Yes, uh, yes, the contour of the yes, pancreatic not, tissue not, is yes, not regular. Not regular. So, Doctor Yunan, let me ask you this: Up till now, does this patient have any criteria of malignancy? Yeah, uh, uh, one of the most important criteria of malignancy is dilated pancreatic duct. Okay. It's another criteria of chronic pancreatitis. Yes, but usually we uh, cancer pancreatic head here. We're dealing with a distal structure. Yes. So we're dealing with a mass in the pancreatic head or unsnit process. Okay. Usually we find it with a dilated pancreatic duct. Okay. So okay. let's keep the, moving. The age of the patient mm -hmm. make us first to consider chronic pancreatitis, mm -hmm. then cancer head. Yes. Our so patient is about 30 years old, 30 by the years. way. Yeah. Yes. He's a healthy patient. Uh, he didn't lose weight. So um, we were rather pro that this is chronic pancreatitis up till now because most of the criteria that we have managed to found via EUS goes with chronic pancreatitis, Here we, correct? Yes, 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 yes. Here's the superior mesenteric artery in the bottom of the image and we can find the, we can, here there's a confluence and the pancreatic head not well uh, illustrated. We will mm -hmm. find, we will examine the head uh, uh, in, the in, next stage. in the next station. Yes. So back to the endoscopic, endoscopic image. Uh, Dr. Yunan now is trying to find the, the pyloric, ring pyloric ring to go into the duodenum. Typically like ARCB. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so okay. now we, as you see, we are, this in, is in duodenal, the bulb. yes, the bulb of the duodenum. We're back to the US image. Yeah, and now we find the head proper. I can see my stent. Yes, and this is the head <laughs> proper right now, and the portal vein, and the common hepatic artery, mm -hmm. left gastric artery. Uh, uh, excuse me, I will uh, use my hands. I'm really sorry, uh, but to just to demonstrate this, the uh, left gastric artery, uh, I mean gastrodenal artery, common hepatic. So uh, the gastrodenal artery is the one near the scope yeah. at the upper center here. part of the image. Yep. Now the head proper. Let's examine it exactly. We found it's a pancreatic duct. So the structure at quite, the middle, quite yes. Quite irregular with another sign of chronic pancreatitis. Irregular pancreatic duct. Up till now, I didn't see it dilated. We will measure it now. Yes, please. Okay. 2.7, which is normal. It's a normal caliber. Up to three millimeter in the head, it's normal duct. But here is an irregular duct. You, I think you noticed the irregularity of the duct. And mm -hmm. we found in the body is a hyperechoic wall, two minor criteria or minor ductal criteria. Our colleagues, they, let's examine together the head proper. Yes. Yes, we now know the portal vein, severe mesenteric vein. We need now to see the CBD. Yeah. I bet it's dilated, definitely. Yes, here. In the, in the top of the image, the CBD, but the air, the air from the stand, uh, some sort of hindering the... Yeah, if you can where, yes, I will, look, I will, I there will. is flow of bile inside the stent. Yeah, this is yeah, very nice. Yeah, very yes. nice demonstration. And here there is a lymph node. Can we... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can right we now. get a better image, please? Yes, yes, sure. Here now the stent yes. floating inside. Can you see the air of the stent at the upper part 
of the yeah, image here yes. here the air air and the really flow of the bile inside mm -hmm. and here we will i will see right now here's the head proper again here's the portal vein Here's the vein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Up till now, I didn't find any definite mass. Uh, our colleague, till now, there is no definite mass in the pancreatic head. So, Still, up till now, this case is going with chronic pancreatitis. Chronic, yeah, chronic pancreatitis. Mm -hmm. uh, we need this case should be referred to FNB. Yeah. Yes. I Just think to be uh, on the safe side, again, FNB is a must. Um, the criteria are very helpful, definitely, but they're not enough. Uh, uh, let me just, uh, say something, uh, Dr. Neg. Uh, there is a debate, take FMB or not. Uh, mm -hmm. Some endosonographers uh, take only from uh, L-defined mass or not. Mm -hmm. uh, some endosonographers take random biopsies. Mm -hmm. I'm with the other team. I'm with the team. Uh, if you find a definite mass, you will take from it, maybe Kuhn. Maybe maybe a focal uh, malignancy on top or focal pancreatitis. Definitely. Uh, this patient maybe autoimmune pancreatitis, maybe, maybe coin related yes. with a very long history of the chest problems. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But still, we didn't examine the onset process yet. Mm -hmm. The next session, we will discuss in details the examination of the onset process mm -hmm. uh, to finalize if there is any definite mass or not. Okay. Let's move to the next station. We're going further into D2. So again, Dr. Yinan is shortening his scope yeah. so that he would pass into the second part of the didenum, just like what we explained in ERCP. And now I'm facing the lavilla and the fin coming out. Now I can make a suction and taking the starting my examination for the unsnit and the lavilla. The importance of suction in EUS is that it makes you closer to the tissue yeah. so that there is no gap between you and the tissue examined we so that yes. you can see properly what you're examining. Yes, we usually say suction in EOS equal air in colonoscopy. Exactly. You, you exactly. cannot finalize colonoscopy without air and you cannot do EOS without suction. Definitely. Now we found the unsnit process inside uh, uh, in front of us. Yes. Here our colleagues now, we found a uh, more or less... On the top right of the in screen. On the top right of the screen, the unsnit process. There is a low hypercoccus today, and there is an ill-defined mass around at the left part of it. Yeah, the left part. I will measure it now. Yes, please. I don't know. It's a mass or a nodule or something like that. Maybe around. it's a node. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a mass. Six millimeter. A lesion. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 going backward now. I'm examining the onset process very well. To see so any do, do, you, do you agree with me that the lower part of the onset process is maybe a little bit maybe a little suspicious? Bit suspicious. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. The lower part that we're talking about is the one just below the yeah. node or the other suspicious lesion that we have just measured. If we freeze in here, maybe I'll try to measure it too. Here, Dr. Neg, yes, I think you, yes. You, 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 yes, I meant this part. This part, till not here. Yes, here, right? exactly. It's about two centimeters. Right, I will measure it totally. It's really ill defined and it no is. clear boundaries. Yes. Yeah, it's a 22 by 11. Mm. Um, it is rather small, but yet. It's yeah, here it's homogenous, but yes. here it's homogenous. Yes. Yeah, usually it is we, suspicious. If it's a suspicion, you have to take. Uh, if yes. Can be, yes. Here is the onset process, I think, totally examined. Uh, uh, yes, this is uh, the, the agent, Dr. Negm, uh, raised point about it. Yeah, maybe, maybe suspicious, maybe, maybe not. Just a little bit. I think if we yes. will take an FMB, we will take from this. Exactly. Th th this would be a perfect point yes, for to, an FMB. Yes, 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 sure. From all what we've examined, this is the most suspicious point. Yeah. Here, it's very nice to demonstrate, illustrate Zaba Villa. Yes. Because in ERCB, Dr. Negm said it's in a bulky or uh, it was small a little bit suspicious. We, we will find here in the left of, or the left of the screen the duodenum with with fluid inside mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the onset process and the stent coming out from the babilla and I see really the babilla very homogeneous right now. Yes, there is no definite no regions. definite masses. Usually babillary mass usually hypoechoic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. Very nice demonstration. The stent coming out from the bancria, from the babilla to the duodenum, yes. and the, the fluid in the duodenum makes the babilla very. Yes. Actually, we can see the flow of bile, the bile coming through. out. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Now I think we, regarding the Babel, I, I will never say it's an ill-defined, maybe. Yeah. It's homogen, rather homo, okay. Homogen it's rather okay. As a normal Babel, yes. up to 1.5 centimeter. Mm -hmm. It's not, nothing in the Babel right now. Yes. The issue is this unsnit process. Yes. Me, we can say this, all of this unsnit process may be a mass. Maybe, 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 maybe L-defined two, two by twenty-two by eleven, or this the, another smaller, or all of this is chronic pancreatitis. Should we respect Rosman criteria, or we you you, you find another criteria uh, to uh, classify or diagnose chronic pancreatitis in EMS? Uh, for me, I'm respecting very much Rosman criteria, but sometimes it will not be totally enough for me to illustrate or understand a lot of cases. But in this case, if we if we we respect the Rosman criteria. If we say lobulation is a major parenchymal, yes. it's trending minor parenchymal, hyperacoustic with thyroid shadow with shadowing minor parenchymal, the doctor will have two criteria, a regular outline, it's a minor criteria, or hyperacoustic whole minor criteria. If we respect the Rosman criteria in this patient, we'll say it's a suggestive of chronic pancreatitis. Mm. If we don't, we can say in our report it's a chronic pancreatitis per se. So uh, I think it's a rather controversial case. Yeah, very, very interesting case and very controversial. And uh, every day in every in the US less you find a case like that. Yes. And uh, I, I, I'm very, uh, I'm very waiting to know the, the opinion of our colleagues in this case. What, what, what they will do? Uh, take FMB or not? Follow mm -hmm. up. Or if you want to follow up, follow up after what, three months, six months, four weeks, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, so a very good case very for discussion, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So thank you so much, Dr. Yunen. It has been a very beautiful demonstration.